One more. One more project. I think after five years, I'd know that it goes the other way around. Ooh. All right. Just one more. I promise. Okay, this is the pallet that the CNC came on. It does have very thin slats, so I'm gonna try and do this with one pallet, because I don't really want to go hunting. Not that it's hard if you want pine. There is thousands of them. The top side actually has these 25 mil slats, so see how we go, see how far we can stretch this bad boy. I'm also gonna bust down in here because I don't want to get sunburned. Probably wasn't gonna get sunburned in the two minutes that this takes. Alrighty, uh, quick update. The table saw, the new table saw is happening. There was a few little holdups somewhere in the supply chain. So stay tuned. So after emotionally farewelling my little yellow friend here, my wife asked me if we should simply buy a small bench for her studio. It was about 180 bucks. And I was like, hell no. I have four days off, I have a pine pallet, and I can whip up something suitable and also get to make a video. The plan is to keep this as simple as possible and also chat about tools along the way. Tools to get started, tools that I recommend you get. Okay. Just quickly, I'll show you my latest straightening jig, which I love the most. Uh, these ratchet clamps, they're on Banggood. Just search ratchet clamp Banggood. They're very good. Okay, it relies on the dovetail in your straightening jig. Now, I made my dovetail, didn't have a dovetail bit. Just cut some angles with your circular saw, table saw, and then glue the top piece to the bottom piece. Then you have your dovetail action. These are the fastest way of straightening pallet wood. Are way better than toggles, way better than the screw downs, super fast. The beauty is I don't need to do it in this video. They're straight enough to go through the table saw safely. Sorry, so why these are much better and faster is because most of the time pallet wood is always of varying thicknesses. The ratchet clamp plonks down onto the rando thickness the quickest. You'll find that the toggles, although good, they require a lot of fluffing around when you have the different thicknesses and to get the right tension. And the screw down, hold down clamps are slow for obvious reasons. But saying that, this particular design is great for putting a straight edge on a slab. Now what I'll probably do is make a new one of these, but I'll still set it up with the dovetails. So the ratchet clamp will do both things, all sorts of bits and pieces, tapering all the thing. These, I can use them somewhere else. I recently went on the Woodbiz podcast and the topic came up about what tools you would start out with if you could go back and start again. So I wanted to use this video just to highlight a few. On the podcast, my advice was to just get started and then find a way to get a table saw into your workshop. As soon as possible, do what you have to do to make that happen. It is simply the most versatile tool that you can have in your shed, and it is an absolute workhorse. I've picked a width of about 35 to 40 millimeters. This gives me two boards per pallet slat. And I'm then going to resaw the boards into two different thicknesses because I have both thin and thick pallet boards. I'm trying to maximize what I have from this particular pallet. This lamination technique will let me create longer than a standard pallet board slab. Stick with me. All right, thanks for sticking with me. I have whipped up a quick clamping board and all I'm doing is lining up the lengths of the same thickness board to create a longer slab. As long as the boards are the same thickness on each run, it will all clamp together nicely and it will be super strong, of course. You may have noticed I have not cleaned off every face of every single board. The goal is to have every face as clean and flat as possible, but that may not always be perfect 
or possible with the tools that you have. What we want is to avoid any moisture getting into those voids between the boards. That is where the problems and separations will occur. So stick with me, I have my reasons. But in short, if your piece of furniture is out of the weather and it's got some sort of protection on it, it is going to be fine. Especially this one, laminated, interlocked. Bit of tight ass advice here, don't go too tight ass on the grease proof paper. This one's about two bucks and it is not grease proof enough. Spend the four bucks and save yourself a heap of grief. I might turn the fan off. Two dollars. Second tool I recommend getting as early on as possible is a router. Again, super duper versatile and great for flattening pallet wood slabs and other types of wood slabs. Now, I have well and truly done my apprenticeship flattening slabs with a router. So, I'm gonna run these slabs through the thicknesser, get them nice and flat, both sides, and move on. I have these pine legs from Mark 1 dining table I made and I'm going to use those as the timber is kind of sentimental to me and my wife. So this was a perfect project to use those up. So with that in mind, this is probably a two pallet project. I'm not sure I understand. Again, there are plenty of pine pallets out there. Nobody is arguing that. Third tool is a belt sander with 40 grit sandpaper. This is going to remove material very fast and also clean off your slabs quickly after you have flattened them with a router. You will use this beast heaps. And again, if you listen to that podcast, you'll hear Dean talk about the belt sander. Professional furniture maker still smashes out the belty. Again, the router is very versatile at cutting circles and segments of circles, and in this case, half circles. Thank you. 
Ideally, getting through the thickness of the slab with the router bit would be great, but if you can't, you can just bust out a jigsaw. I only use a jigsaw a handful of times per year, so a cheap and or nasty will do me just fine for those occasions. DIY entry level tools are perfectly fine to just get started, but also just have lying around for when you do need that rando tool here and there. You can beat the snot out of them if they break. I'm sure they're gonna be under warranty if you are picking up what I'm putting down. I'm going to use the table saw for most of the frame, which again is to show that if you make a few jigs and sleds, you can cut heaps of different joints and avoid using a handsaw and a mallet and chisel again. I did make a rookie error here. I used my stock to set the size of the cut to make, forgot about the thickness of the blade. So therefore that joint was out by the thickness of the blade. It is also the reason I decided to do one entire leg and corner first in case I made any blunders and it just let me iron out the process for the rest. Next tool you'll probably want to get, and you probably had it well before your table saw, is a miter saw. Again, very versatile for making different types of cuts with ease, and this saw will be another workhorse for smashing pallet wood down to varying sizes and shapes. I am trying something a little bit different with these particular corner joints. Simple, but strong. They are not exactly aesthetically pleasing just yet. So stick with me. Alrighty, thanks for sticking with me. So I'm going to put a round over on all the edges to try and unify this frame and improve the overall look. Keep in mind, this is just a little bench to hold a few random asses here and there. Now, before I get to the beauty shots, I want to quickly talk about the biggest issue I have right now in the shed. 
Spice. Spice. The CNC has a very awkward footprint to fit anywhere in my shed. And simply, something has to go. So I don't go insane trying to operate in this small space. So after about two copies of consideration, I have decided to give the Mitosaur the arse and dedicate that space to the CNC. If there is one thing that woodworking has taught me, it is that there is many ways to get the same job done. I had no regrets selling the bandsaw. I had no regrets selling the bandsaw. And I already know I'll have no regrets saying goodbye to the Mitosaur. I have many other spinning blade options to get the job done. And I'm actually looking forward to the challenge of trying to figure things out without the Mitosaur. Did not think I would be uh, hanging out of this hole again for a while. It may even let me get to come up with a few new jigs, which I'll get to show up here anyway. Okay, just one more thing. I have created a second channel and it is called Dana Made Unofficial. And it is where I am considering dropping some other videos that are a bit more talky talky, maybe some more deep dive how to's, as well as other rando bits and pieces that I wanna show off around here in the shed. Uh, the link is down below if you are interested and that will help me sort of gauge of how much time and energy I put into that channel. And it'll obviously give me a good idea of how many of you want to see more of my Backyard Bandit activities. Let's call this semi, semi-temporary. <laughs> Let's have a quick look outside what we're doing here. So there's the original white board. That is just providing some waterproofing. So my other dodgy roof. Water falls onto this dodgy roof, and we're good to go. So, a simple pine pallet, whitewashed and clear coated. This style of finish was one of my most popular in my earlier pallet wood furniture projects, and it still is, especially for hallway tables, the frames, and pine is the most accessible when it comes to pallets. It is easy on your tools and blades, and it is perfect to learn a few skills before you start laying down your cash buying potential more cooler, harder timbers, or before you start using those really nice hardwood pallets that you are gonna find because you're just gonna keep looking. Okay, catch you later.